I want to speak to disillusionment within social work. I think this is something we need to talk about. Teaching is by far the longest position I've ever held. Prior to teaching, I spent I think only a maximum of three years in each social work position I was in. So I did change around and move around quite often. I covered a pretty broad spectrum from micro to macro, working directly with children and families who are involved in the foster care system, supervisory positions, policy, research and evaluation. And I currently am still a part-time adjunct. If you are following along with my journey, you ultimately know where this all led. It ultimately led me to walk out of social work, walk out of my normative career path in order to explore other avenues of social change making. That decision was not one that I took lightly because I truly loved aspects of my work. I never stopped enjoying helping people, working with people. It was absolutely the systems and the organizations which I was within that ultimately drove me out. At the time when I was changing jobs, I always felt like it was something related specifically to that job. I thought if I change my scenery, change my working environment, change you know the people who are overseeing me, I thought that would change my experience of doing the work. And reflecting back about this, since I've now been out of a normative social work type of role for the last couple of years, I'm understanding why it never worked. I'm understanding why it doesn't work. Here is the ultimate problem. All of these roles, social work as a profession, everything we're trying to do to help people and make this society a better place, it is all taking place within the broader frameworks of capitalism and colonialism. Every position I held, direct service to indirect service, it all came down to money. At the end of the day, all of the decisions that were being made on behalf of the organization came down to money. And they have to, decisions have to come down from money. The structure of our society has dictated that. Capitalism dictates that. Innately, capitalism and humanism are opposed. By working within a framework of capitalism, we are inherently prioritizing capital. We are inherently using that to drive our decisions. We're not making a decision from the best interests of the people. We're not making a decision based on what do people actually need. We're always in the guise of how do we bring in money in order to support this organization, this entity, the system's survival. Okay, that's a big pill to swallow. We can't do anything to change the fact that we live in a capitalistic, colonialist society right now. That's not something that can be immediately changed. That's a long-term goal, like centuries down the road. But there are two things that I want to speak to in this video that I see reflected in the problematic aspects of social work and problematic aspects of the ways that we try to help people as a culture, as a society. And I really do feel like these point us in a direction to do some sort of shifting within our profession. The main two issues that I see rampant within our field, from direct service to indirect service, micro to macro, including social work education, hypocrisy, and ignorance. And I want to context this also. My conclusions have not only come from my observations of what's happening outside of me within these positions, my conclusions have also come from a lot of internal unpacking myself, of looking at me and how am I showing up within these roles, whose value systems am I embodying, whose definitions of helping am I embodying. I'm absolutely speaking to myself as well. The reason that I can put into words some of this is because of my own unpacking process of looking at it within and seeking to address and shift and change those pieces of myself, which is a constant work in progress. All of this is calling for broader cultural shifts and that is something that happens slowly. I have a few specifics and examples of how I see hypocrisy and ignorance getting in our way and making positive social change or in helping other people. First of all is us versus them thinking. From my own experiences on the professional side of social work and my personal experiences seeking help and, and navigating the mental health system, I've noticed this mentality, this paradigm, that we as the helping professionals don't need help, our clients are the ones who need help. Oh, I don't need therapy, there's nothing wrong with me. Related to this, I also noticed a huge lack of trauma consciousness. Employees and students are treated like they don't have trauma. We're expected to follow all the normative conditioning in terms of what it means to work in this society. You better be on time, you only get so many days off. You better complete all of your projects, forget what's going on in your personal life, forget what's going on socially, business as usual. That is a colonial mentality. That is something that has been socialized 
and indoctrinated within us to get us to perform in order to support a capitalistic system. And the problem is, is that when employees and students are not treated in honor of their trauma histories, because we all have a trauma history, this trickles down. It trickles down to our clients. It's hypocritical. How can we expect social workers to meet the trauma needs of populations when they haven't even been modeled that, when they've learned it out of a textbook and haven't actually experienced it? When policies and practices and paradigms teach us that we just need to suck it up and push through and show up and perform no matter what, when we have to be perfect productivity professional robots all the time, first of all, that's a huge source of burnout and how can people stay in a position when they're treated that way? And secondly, we learn through experience. We don't learn through being told something. We learn through experiencing things. When we're not given the grace to be humans, we're not going to be able to give our clients that grace either. We're going to project our same mentalities onto them that we're projecting onto ourselves. We start to label people as good or bad. There's something wrong with some people. There's nothing wrong with me. This overemphasis on professionalism hurts us as social workers. It hurt me as a social worker. I learned how to detach from my body. I learned how to operate entirely within my head. I spent years not even knowing that I was struggling with anxiety and depression because I had been socialized to think that I was not one of the people who needed help. I had been socialized to think that to be a good person, to be a good social worker, I had to show up and perform, turn in all my assignments in school on time, get straight A's, get noticed by the boss for doing a good job. My perfectionism was rewarded and it taught me really toxic things about being human. And this was projected onto my clients. Oh, I just need to teach them how to perform. Like thinking about a lot of the types of programming that social workers offer. It is a lot about teaching our clients to perform. It is a lot about trying to get our clients to be more like us the ones who don't need help, the ones who can do it themselves. Especially in terms of, of the professionalism piece, I see this rooted in the history of social work. There was a huge battle in the early days of social work. People who were social workers at the time really had to advocate in order to get recognition as a legitimate career. There were standards that social work had to figure out how to measure up to. The profession of social work had to be fit within those academic boxes. And this is part of where I feel like this problem came from. This emphasis on professionalism, this emphasis on academia, this emphasis on we're a real profession. I get it. That's valid. That was a important advocacy effort at the time. I also feel that we've overcompensated and that we have lost ourselves in trying to fit ourselves within colonial capitalist academic structures. By maintaining a professional separation from our clients, we dehumanize ourselves and honestly we gaslight our clients. By masquerading as though we have our shit together, that we don't need help, that we are the ones who do the helping and you are the ones who receive the help, we're gaslighting the very real lived experiences of our clients that prevent them from being able to achieve as a productivity robot. And by and large, we as social workers are not these perfect productivity robots either. Like we are struggling. It is hard out there. We are harmed by these policies just like our clients are. We've lost ourselves trying to meet colonial definitions of legitimacy. These efforts to be viewed as valid within colonial capitalist definitions means that we've dehumanized our field. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you have been in a position where you felt as though you weren't being treated as though you were really human, as though parts of your humanity didn't matter. Having to hide self-expression, having to hide our emotions, having to hide aspects of who we are in order to be seen as professional by our employers and by our colleagues. We need to look at our standards of professionalism and think about what are the implications of these? How are we upholding systems of oppression? How are we upholding capitalism and colonialism? I'm talking about the ways that we talk, I'm talking about the ways that we dress, and I'm talking about the policies and practices that we are forced to follow and that we inflict upon our clients. Whose standards are we seeking to meet and who do they really serve? I also wanna talk about our perceptions of what does it mean to help? 
Social work has a long history in saviorship, in professionals stepping into a space, into a community, looking around saying, I am the one who can help you find a solution to your problems. Here's what you need to do. That is a definition of paternalism. There's a phrase that comes from the disability rights movement, nothing about us without us is for us. That slogan is applicable to every single situation you can imagine that involves people needing help. When we have people from the outside coming in and deciding on a solution and presenting that solution to the people around them, we're not truly serving them. And we don't think that we do this because we engage with our clients and we have these processes of information collecting and reflection and analyzation. But when we're looking for solutions to social problems, very rarely are we actually asking and honoring what the populations who are impacted say that they need. Most often we're looking to what have social workers done historically? What do experts think? What does the scientific evidence say we should do here? From being on the inside of data and statistics, I can tell you that process is riddled with flaws and influenced by capitalism. Western science has always been used to justify genocide, racism, slavery. Western science is not infallible, but we teach it within these professional positions as though it is. Science is not objective. Anything humans are doing is not objective. Nothing is certain in science, in statistics, in data, in evaluation. When we perpetuate these ideas that Western science is somehow infallible or somehow better than other ways of believing, other scientific understandings, we are perpetuating oppression. We are perpetuating us versus them. We are perpetuating colonial ways of thinking that we know better than you do. Saviorship ways of thinking that we know better than you do. Another unintended consequence of this huge emphasis on evidence-based practice is that it denies lived experience. We end up forcing people to look at what research and scientific studies and whitewashed textbooks have to say about a social problem instead of listening to their actual experience living with the social problem. I saw this in academia where student experiences were diminished and dismissed. And I saw this in the helping profession when the ways that I was trying to help a client didn't match what that client was actually asking me for. Relatedly, in the social work profession and in other helping professions, I see us stuck in a focus on amelioration instead of prevention. To ameliorate something means to address it at a surface level. It means to take something that exists and try and make it not exist. To prevent something means to address something at a deeper level, from a roots perspective, radically. It means to address the context and circumstances that are creating the problem in the first place so that we don't keep experiencing the problem. Most social work interventions are designed to ameliorate an issue. And that's for many reasons. It is legitimately harder to address the roots of a social problem than it is to try and address the symptoms of that social problem. I see this coming up in modern social work practice is the prioritization of micro social work over macro social work. So by micro, I primarily mean clinical social work. We end up teaching people how to navigate within broken systems instead of changing systems to better work for people. We need both, like we need social workers who are working directly with people, absolutely. The problem is, is when micro is prioritized over macro and we have many, many, many more social workers who are working directly with people as opposed to thinking about bigger systemic issues on a roots level. If I'm teaching my client who is experiencing poverty how to better navigate systems, I'm not changing the circumstances that created poverty for that client in the first place which are bigger than that client's individual experience. This is also dictated by capitalism and money because there is much more money in micro work, in therapy in particular, than there is in macro work. So there's a lot more availability to help people in the realm of micro work than there is in macro work. And I'm not saying again that we don't need to help clients individually navigate systems of oppression because that's the real lived experience that they're having. But when I'm constantly teaching people how to better navigate within systems of oppression, I'm actually strengthening those systems of oppression. I'm supporting the systems and structures and services that have to be created within capitalism and colonialism. And I'm reinforcing a system where individual clients are gonna have to continue to navigate those hoops. It is possible to do both 
but I see this huge divide in micro and macro social work where some people think that they only like micro and some people think that they only like macro and then we lose sight of the crossover between those two. And this is really like where social work came into being in the first place is a recognition that we need both ways of helping individual people navigate their circumstances and ways of changing the circumstances themselves. We can hold both of those realities in mind and heart when we are working with clients, when we are designing interventions. That is what the mission of social work speaks to, is being able to hold both of those realities. Okay, what can we do about this? I've already said, obviously, we can't immediately change the fact that we live in a colonial capitalist environment. There's some things that are bigger than us that we just can't change right now. But here's where I see some need. And here is what I am calling for in a vision of social work that I feel would more live up to its intention of helping people, helping society. I want more authenticity and less professionalism. When we act like robots with our clients, when we can't show emotion, when we have to act like we have our shit together. Again, we are gaslighting anyone who is struggling to maintain in society as normal because this is not normal. Colonialism and capitalism is not normal. We live in a deeply dehumanizing society. We are all experiencing that. When we act like that's just fine and normal and everything's great, we are setting everyone up around us to chase a fantasy. I spent most of my life chasing that fantasy, thinking that the people who worked above me, thinking that the people who I looked up to within the profession somehow had it figured out, somehow had it all together, somehow had achieved this like happiness state. When I went through the steps to do what they did to try and get where they had got, it took me nowhere. It was a fantasy. The harder I tried to fit into these like cookie cutter guidelines that are placed upon us, the more unhappy I got. We have to be real. We have to show up and be real people with personal struggles, with concerns about the broader society. We need diversity in social work. We need people to show up as their full, authentic, true selves. This is how we can give our clients permission to do the same. There's a balance here, you know? Like I'm not saying go fall apart to your clients, of course, but to be able to show up as human, to express frustration and anger and disappointment in society the way it is. Wear t-shirts, <laughs> to show emotions, to cry. It gives our clients permissions to show emotions and cry too. Why are we teaching people that emotions are bad? And to be able to say like, this sucks, this sucks, it's not okay. That validates us as humans and it validates our clients as humans and they need and deserve that from us. The other big thing I want to see in our profession is critical reflection critical self-reflection, and critical social environment reflection. We need to recognize that trauma is not something that lives in our clients. Trauma is something that we live in as well. It is a soup we are all floating around in. Some of us are struggling more. Some of us are struggling less, yes, but there is no difference between us and them. And we have got to work on keeping in mind and adequately recognizing and honoring the reality of our social environment. Colonization is not something that happened in the past. We are living in the colonial era. The way we show up, the way we embody our human form on a daily basis, is either perpetuating or dismantling colonialism. If we're going along with social culture, if we're going along with the way things are, if we think our social culture is normal or the norm, we are perpetuating colonialism. So all this is very, very, very socialized. It really is not something I don't feel that we can start to unpack until it is pointed out to us or until we seek information to dismantle those lenses within ourselves. We need to decolonize social work education. We need to include analysis of colonialism in social work education. We need to start looking and thinking as a profession about the ways that that aspect of our history and of our current reality influences the work we do, influences our perceptions of the work we do, and influences truly everything. We need to get outside of a white Eurocentric lens and look to other cultures. How do other cultures, how do indigenous cultures perceive mental illness, poverty, oppression? How do other cultures treat these things? There's a quote from a reading that I assigned to many of my classes that says, inequalities are created by people. So is equality. Both only occur because we continue to maintain them through our thoughts and actions. 
this is how we need to look at social problems, this is how we need to look at oppression, and this is how we need to look at our colonial structures around us. Oppression, injustice, poverty, suffering are not givens. They're not natural to the human experience. They don't have to be a part of how humans live. We can hold that knowing, we can hold that understanding in mind as we are working with people in the very real context of an environment where people are struggling and suffering and need help now. The problem is that we can't change what we don't understand. And so if we are just going about our social work practice like, well, this is normal, the way society is structured is normal, the fact that oppression exists is normal, nothing we can do about it. If we have that perception, nothing will change. We won't do anything about it. It will stay the same. If we keep doing what we've been doing, we'll keep getting what we've got. We as a profession need to wake up and recognize what we've got is not okay. We need to do something differently. And I want us to start that process internally of just the way that we think about our social context, the way that we think about our social environment. Do we have awareness that we are living in a colonial reality? Are we maintaining that awareness when we're working with people? Are we maintaining that awareness when we're working with people of different cultures especially? Social work is largely white dominated, largely female dominated. It is on us to teach ourselves those lenses because society isn't necessarily going to teach us that the way it would if we held other marginalized identities. Colonization isn't something that happened. It is an ongoing experiment and we are either creating it or uncreating it through our thoughts and our actions. That is a daily process, that's a daily practice. We can't just accept that this is the way things are. We have to help our clients see that this is not natural because they're suffering and they're suffering for valid reasons that have nothing to do with how hard they're trying or how good they are. And we have to be aware for ourselves too of how this stuff influences us. Burnout is pervasive for a reason. It's gonna stay that way. The systems and structures aren't gonna change anything. We have to be the ones to change it. So this is my call, this is my cry to my fellow social workers. We've gotta wake up, we've gotta do things differently, whether that is within the social work system or outside of the social work system. There's a reason why what we're doing isn't working. There's a reason why the disillusionment that is prevalent in our field exists. It is valid. We have to acknowledge these truths in order to change them. This is how I'm doing that. I challenge all of you who are watching this to think about how you might do that as well. It's different for all of us. Again, none of this is on any one of our shoulders. None of us created the context and the environment that we're navigating right now. No one individual person is to blame for the systems and structures and problems that exist. But inequalities are created by people. So our equalities every day, the way that we're showing up in the world is moving in one direction or the other. Which pathway do we want to support? How can we create a more humanized way of doing social work? And that's what I want us to explore.